In our next lesson on Chapter 17, Lipid Metabolism, we want to consider lipoprotein particles. As the name suggests, these particles contain both protein and lipid components. These are our primary source of circulating lipids. In other words, our primary means of delivering lipids to and from cells. The protein component serves several important functions. First and most importantly, it makes these particles soluble in an aqueous environment. Due, the, due to their large nonpolar surface area, lipids would normally be insoluble in water due to the hydrophobic effect. But the protein component makes them soluble in this environment. The proteins also serve to to target these particles to the receptors on surface of cells so that therefore the lipids can be delivered. They also serve to modulate enzymes that act on lipids. In the illustration at the bottom of our slide, the head groups of cholesterol and phospholipids are indicated by the large blue spheres and the protein component by the smaller spheres in the variable colors. Every lipoprotein particle contains both lipid and protein. The only difference is in the relative proportion of the two. Let's consider the types of lipoprotein particles. First, we'll consider chylomicrons. Lipids that we take into our diet and are processed in the intestine are packaged into chylomicrons for delivery from the intestine to other tissues. We have an illustration of a chylomicron at the top of our slide. The apolipoprotein or protein component is marked. Phospholipids in blue, triacylglycerols and cholesterol esters in yellow, and cholesterol is also marked. So as you can see, these particles contain variable types of lipids as well as proteins. These are the largest of our lipoprotein particles, 1,000 to 5,000 angstroms, and they contain the highest proportion of lipid, only 1 to 2 percent protein. It's not important you remember these numbers, only that these are the largest of our lipoprotein particles and have the highest proportion of lipid. They transport triacylglycerols to adipose tissue for storage, but primarily they transport lipids and cholesterol to the liver for use and for repackaging so that these lipid particles can send lipids to other cells and tissues within the body. Let's look at Table 17.1 from your book illustrating the characteristics of lipoprotein particles. In our table we have indicated the lipoprotein particle on the far left Chylomicrons we've already considered. We'll also consider in turn VLDL, IDL, LDL, and HDL. It's not important you remember these exact numbers, but let's note the trends. We'll notice as we go down the table the diameter decreases from chylomicrons to HDL. We see this correlates with an increase in density in the next column. How does this relate to the proportion of protein in triacylglycerol? As the diameter decreases and the density increases, we have a higher proportion of protein and a smaller proportion of triacylglycerol. And that is what I would have you remember, that as the percentage of protein increases, so does the density of the particle. Here we have an illustration of a small angle neutron scattering of a high density lipoprotein particle. Remember this is the densest of our particles, the smallest with the highest percentage of protein. The HDL or protein component is highlighted in orange and the lipid core containing cholesterol and phospholipids as well as cholesterol esters is highlighted in green. As you can see a very high proportion of protein to lipid. You'll also notice that on all of these particles, the protein component is on the exterior. Let's consider more of those lipoprotein particle types. As we've already seen, chylomicrons are packaged within the intestine and then those particles, some of those travel to adipose tissues to deliver triacylglycerols for storage, but primarily those particles travel to the liver. It will deliver lipids and cholesterol there and the liver will repackage these particles so that we can send lipids to other cells. Every cell in our body needs lipids. The 
primary form in which they are exported from the liver is VLDL, very low density lipoproteins. And that's indicated at the top right of our illustration. These particles contain triacylglycerols, phospholipids, as well as cholesterol esters. They circulate in the blood. As they do so, they will donate some of those triacylglycerols to tissues. As this happens, they become smaller and denser. They also become richer in cholesterol. So in other words, the protein component remains the same, but we're losing lipids as these travel and circulate in the bloodstream. So we have a higher percentage of protein to lipid, and that correlates with a smaller size and a denser particle. Next we have intermediate density lipoproteins, or IDL, and these form as VLDL give up some of their triacylglycerols. It's only an intermediate state between VLDL and LDL, and therefore the circulating concentration of IDL is not high. The primary circulating form is LDL, low density lipoprotein particles, that form as those IDL particles give off more of their triacylglycerols. High levels of LDL correlate to atherosclerosis, which we discussed in the previous lesson. This is why sometimes LDL is referred to as the so-called bad cholesterol. It's low density and you want low amounts because it correlates with this disease state. However, I would point out that there are other factors involved in the disease. It's not well understood. So although we know that high levels of LDL correlate to vascular disease, we don't really understand why. Finally, we have high density lipoprotein or HDL particles. The primary function for these particles is not delivery, but export. It transports excess cholesterol back to the liver and removes the excess cholesterol from cells. And for this reason it's sometimes called good cholesterol. High density, you want high amounts so that we can take away the excess cholesterol, repackage it, and recycle it to other cells. In our next video lesson, we'll see how lipid metabolism fits within the context of the general flow of metabolites in the cell, and we'll also look at the major pathways of lipid metabolism that we'll consider in greater detail in subsequent lessons.